This is gonna be a long video. I'm forewarning you now. But the good news is I had a latte from Cream and Sugar that was literally this big. So hopefully I'm gonna talk really fast because I have had a lot of caffeine and it's like 5 p.m. So maybe that'll make this video a little bit shorter, but who knows? And for your further consideration, I'm gonna list all of the time codes in the description below. That way if you wanna jump ahead to a specific product and don't wanna sit through all of this video because who knows how long it's gonna be. I don't at this point. So if you want to jump around, you will be able to do so via the links in the description box. He knows he's in trouble. So in case you couldn't have guessed, by the title of this video, we are just gonna talk generally about all of my makeup. So in my most recent makeup videos, I have a disclaimer in the description where I list all of my products. It says something along the lines of, all my products are cruelty free and rated three or lower on the EWG toxicity scale. So first off, all of the products I use are cruelty free. So I have a really strict guideline as to what is cruelty free or not. To save precious animals like you. Huh? 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 Are you precious? Cause you're acting not precious right now. Could you shush? Could you shush? <laughs> no. Okay, and you don't have to agree with me on this, but in my opinion, brands like Becca and It Cosmetics and lots more technically are cruelty free. They do not test their products on animals, but those brands and a lot of other brands like that are owned by larger companies like L'Oreal who do test on animals. So if you want to spend money on cruelty-free brands like that, by all means, they are still good companies. They're just not up to my very strict standards of cruelty-free. And the second part of my makeup disclaimer is that everything is rated three or less in toxicity levels. So what that is from is the Environmental Working Group, which has a huge list of all toxins that can possibly be in makeup. It's on a scale from one to 10, it's a big scale. <laughs> so essentially all the products that I choose to buy are rated very low on the toxicity scale. I do that for the greater good of my skin. Any makeup product essentially gets absorbed into your body and that is why I am picky about the ingredients in my makeup. So yes, a lot of my makeup is very high end, it's very expensive, but I do that for the greater good of my own body. And I will say I don't have a vast variety of makeup because I wear very little to no makeup every day. This is mainly for cosplay. So it does last me a long time, but mainly in buying such good products for the past two years, I have noticed a significant improvement in the quality and health of my skin. I'm be honest with you, I do not wash my face very often. I probably wash my face with like soap and cleanser maybe twice a week. Other than that, I just rinse it off with water in the shower or in the morning and I honestly don't suffer from breakouts hardly at all. And I noticed that change when I stopped buying crap products. No, that won't work for everyone, okay? I'm just telling you that I personally noticed a big difference with the quality of my skin based on the makeup products and cleanser products that I choose to use now. About two years ago, I went through a huge makeup cleanup and that huge pile on the right there, that is all makeup that I threw out because I deemed it was not good enough to put on my skin. I only kept a handful of my existing products. Everything else I purchased new after doing a lot of research. All right, get ready for the lengthy part. This is the part where you're probably gonna wanna go to the description and like skip through things, but here I am, I'm gonna show you all the makeup products that I own. We're gonna start with the face group of products. And whenever I show you a product, I am going to put a whole lot of information <laughs> right here telling you all about it so I don't have to discuss that for every product. It'll be written here for you, okay? 100% Pure's Face Primer. I love this stuff. It is light, it goes on so smoothly, and it keeps my makeup really, really nice looking all day. I also have their foundation, which I don't use too often. Honestly, I prefer BB cream, but I have it. I do like it, but I have something else I like more. Know what I mean? For cosplay, I use these two products. It is a BB cream and a CC cream. I either use one or the other or a mix of the both, which you have seen in some tutorials. I love these. They're awesome. Like, I love BB cream more than foundation. The BB creams I use exclusively for cosplay. For every day, I use this Andalou Naturals CC cream. I also have the BB cream, but it's at my boyfriend's house. I have one at each house. This stuff is awesome. It's super light coverage, so if you have huge breakouts, it's not gonna cover them that well, but it's light, it's airy, it doesn't feel like it's caked on or thick, and it, it's flawless. It stays on all day. I love this stuff. 
For concealer, I have the Silk Naturals Peach HD Concealer. This one has a little bit more pinky undertones to match my skin tone, but they also have varieties more of yellow and darker colors. It is creamy, I love the formula, it blends off great and doesn't get cakey. Powder, I have the Organic Wear Loose Powder. Hmm, I don't know what I'm saying, but this stuff is thicker. More coverage, you know what I'm saying? My preference is actually the Well People Translucent Powder. This stuff is thin, it is light, it can go over any makeup, any color, even body paint, like this is my go-to. I love this stuff. I only have one bronzer contour, it's from 100% Pure, it's the Coco Glow. It's a little orangey, but pale people have a lot of trouble with bronzer or contour looking orangey. I prefer something with a bluer hue, but this is all they have. I just can't find something that is good enough for my pale skin tone. But this, I really like the product. It's just too orange for me. But I still use it. I mean like, highlighters, I have three of them. The first is a stick highlighter. It's from Silk Naturals and it's more of a yellow color. It's pretty. I like it. It's awesome. Next is this. It's actually a sample size. I got it in a beauty box. So like this is what I got. Um, it's called Galaxy Milk Illuminating Beauty Oil. It's awesome, super reflective. It's kind of watery, but it's beautiful on the skin. Lastly is Feeling Younger by Lush. And I just got this, I actually got it as a gift from a friend. Oh boy, does this reflect light. I'm wearing it today. And like, this is gonna last forever. For blushes, all of my blushes from Silk Naturals, it is a loose powder. And I think, were these the sample sizes? But yeah, their blushes are great. They have a good variety of color, shimmer and matte, and they have smaller to big sizes to fit any of your needs. And Silk Naturals also sends tons of samples of eyeshadows, blushes, face powders. Whenever you buy something, they send little samples and baggies. So this is a sample blush. I just collect them because, you know, every character has a different shade of blush and it's just really convenient to have a lot of these little sample packs. So that I think those are all my face products. So lastly, all I have is setting spray, which this is a dollar store bottle, but it's just rose water. That's what I use to set all my makeup. We're gonna move on to the eye section. So all of my eyeshadows, apparently just broke. Apparently just, well, the rest of it just fell out. There's eyeshadow all over my floor now. <laughs> I'm rubbing it off my leg and it's like shimmery pink. <laughs> so if my hands shine for the rest of this video, you will know why. <laughs> so all of my eyeshadows are from Silk Naturals. I will warn you, all of the eyeshadows from Silk Naturals come loose. I press them into these cakes. If you want a tutorial on that, let me know because I will show you how I turn loose into pack patterns if you want. And their eyeshadows are awesome. They're relatively cheap priced. They have a great variety of colors. As you can see, I mainly stick to pinks and neutral tones, but I have <laughs> a few, four, um, brightly colored ones for specific costumes. So part of these, I don't remember which ones, but part of them I bought in a group, like in a palette, and they just sent me a lot of jars of loose colors. And they also recommend like dupe palettes. So if you like like a Tarte palette or a MAC palette, they have duplicate colors recommended for you, which is pretty awesome. Oh, I forgot. I have this little trio of eyeshadow from Pacifica as well. So I do like the Pacifica eyeshadows along with Silk Naturals, but I have more of the Silk Naturals just because they have such a variety of colors and I can pick and choose. Oh, it's my favorite. But the Pacifica stuff lasts pretty good too. And it is convenient that it's just this little trio and they have a variety of the trios. Works pretty good. For eye priming, I just use the e.l.f. eyelid primers. Honestly, they're cheap. They work great. You don't need anything more than that. And the ingredients in them are really, really minimal in toxicity. It's, it's awesome. Oh, but I will warn you, like not all e.l.f. products are great. They have a lot of toxic products, but sometimes you can find gems like this. While brands like 100% Pure, all their stuff is good. You can buy anything you want and it's gonna be great quality for your skin. For my brows, I use a brow cream. I am not a pencil or a powder type of girl. I like the cream and this is from Silk Naturals. It's in medium brown, which used to match my hair color. Doesn't now, but this is what I usually use for my natural color. And for my pink brows, which you can see right now, is I was just using my Silk Naturals Bright Pink, and that's what I powdered over my brows to get them to match my hair color. This is the rest of my products, it's like hardly nothing. So eyeliner, well people, awesome. This stuff 
stays put. I can put it on my waterline and it will stay all day. Great quality stuff right there. Liquid liners from 100% Pure. Oh my God, you guys. This stuff, I have never had a better liner. Does not come off, okay? You like stuck on. And the good thing about it is it doesn't smudge. When it dries, it kind of comes off in like clumps. Like you can kind of peel it off. It's not easy to take off. Like don't get me wrong. It's not going to like crack and fall off your skin, but it does not smudge. So even if you're sweating or have watery eyes, this stuff is not moving. Okay. Good, good stuff. And then lastly, I've got two different kinds of mascara. My favorite is the Pacifica Dream Big. I'm wearing it right now, this, this beautiful, big, full, good color, long lasting. I think they offer waterproof stuff too. I'm not into waterproof. This is good enough for me. My favorite mascara ever, this stuff. I also have Dr. Ha Hashushka, Haushushka. I'm gonna get in trouble for pronouncing that. It's the mascara. I actually bought this one because it's brown just to like mix things up. This stuff is good. I have nothing bad to say about it, but like I like the Pacifica stuff more. And then for everyday wear, I have the Physicians Formula Organic Wear Mascara. I actually really like this stuff. It's good consistency, good formula. The only thing is it never dries, so it smudges really easily, but it's so easy to take off. So yeah, it's kind of a personal opinion that I really like this. Some people really don't because it doesn't dry and it does smudge very easily. <laughs> you want to talk about false lashes real quick? I pretty much only have House of Lashes lashes, as you can tell. <laughs> I love them. They are so good. So this is the entire Tinkerbell collection. And I bought the case because it was all on sale and it was cute and I wanted it. Then I have four more in here from House of Lashes. It's just, I love House of Lashes. They're so gorgeous. So many different styles. Oh, I love them. Lash glue. True glue. This stuff, so good. I've never had an eyelash fall off. Through eight, eight hours of convention wearing in the hot July sun in San Diego, an eyelash has never fallen off with this stuff. I will say, this stuff is hard to get. It's like always sold out on their website. Our last section is lips. So I only have two lip liners. They are both from Honey Bee Gardens and I pretty much have a lighter one and a darker one. And I lost the cap, I lost it at Disneyland. The lighter one is called Zen, and essentially I use this for any neutral to light lipstick shade. The darker one is called Charisma, and I use this for any red to dark shade of lipstick. I use them both for all my lipsticks, and they work great. Like, I don't know why people have to have the exact lip liner color to match their lipsticks. I mean, sure, I could use maybe two more colors, but I've been doing fine with just two colors for a long time, so. Now moving into lipsticks. I'm gonna talk about Silk Naturals lipsticks first. I had two, I don't know where my other one went. Um, I, ha I have a neutral shade, like it's really, I think it's called All Natural or something, and then this one's called Mingle, it's more of a darker pink. They're great, I love them, the formula is great, it's smooth, it doesn't make my lips feel dry after it's gone, it's pretty long wear, but for the price, Silk Naturals, anything they offer is lower on the budget scale and really, really good quality. I really like their lipstick. Next, let's talk about Red Apple lipsticks. This one is Rebel. It's a really red color. It's actually what I wear for Snow White. This lipstick is so good, so creamy. The color is vibrant. Honestly, when I wear this for Snow White, I do not touch it up all day. The full size tubes are kind of expensive, and this is the only one I have, and I didn't pay full price for it because it came in a variety box, but I do buy their little sample pack. It's a decent amount of lipstick. Like you can get maybe like six or seven full lipstick applications out of this. Maybe more, I don't know. It's just great for cosplay. Sometimes you only cosplay a few times and you just need a little bit of lipstick for a few bucks. It's perfect, perfect for cosplay. And their lipstick formula is amazing. My last lipstick is from Besame Cosmetics, which is a vintage brand, oh, it's great. Their lipsticks look like this. They're odd shaped, but honestly, it's really easy to apply. I love this stuff. Great formula, long lasting. This is the only shade I bought because it's kind of expensive, but their store is so much fun to go in. And I always end up spending too much money when I'm in there, but cute packaging, beautiful shades, beautiful colors. I really like Besame Cosmetics. 
Another lipstick I really like is by Pacifica. This is their Power of Love, and I didn't want to put it in here because I can't find it in stores anymore, but you might be able to find it online. But I really like the formula and how it wears, so I do recommend their lipsticks. Lastly, I have like tinted chapstick. This is from Pacifica. I had two colors. I'm down to one color. This is the sugared plum, colored fig, something. Sugared fig. <laughs> I was close on both accounts. This stuff is great. I'm wearing it right now. It is sheer, so it's not like a lipstick. It is a tinted lip balm. Feels great, moisturizes my lips. I feel like the color lasts pretty good and it's super easy to apply. I apply it like chapstick. Lastly, I have two lip glosses and I do not like lip gloss, okay? This one came in a beauty box, so I didn't opt to buy it. And this one came for free because I bought a lot of stuff from 100% Pure, so they threw this one in for free. This pink one is from Marie Nati. It's the shade Tickled. It's thick, it's gooey, it does everything a lip gloss should. I just don't like lip gloss, so. It's a beautiful color, beautiful formula, I will say that. This stuff, from a 100% pure, it's called the Lip Caramel, but do you see how thick this stuff is and how pigmented the stick is? It's like a lipstick, but in a watery gloss format. And this color stays on all day. It kind of stains your lips a little bit, so even if the gloss wears off, you still kind of look like you have color on your lips. I, I kind of wear this kind of often, even though I hate lip gloss. So, I mean, they're doing something right. So if you like lip gloss, you need this stuff. And even if you don't like lip gloss, like me, maybe give this a try. Just put it out there, just something to think about. That's it. That's all the makeup stuff I have. So all of my cosplays, from Snow White to Tracer to casual cosplays like Bee and Puppy Cat, I use the same stuff, just different techniques to get the look for different characters. I did not include any of like special effects makeup, so any of my prosthetics, my glues, my body paints, my glitters. I wanted to keep this like makeup. If you want, I will do a separate video all on like body paint and stuff. I'll give you that if you want it, but that is not going to be part of this video. And again, 99% of the time, all this makeup is for cosplay. This is my everyday makeup bag. It's in the bathroom and there are three products in it. My everyday BB cream my eyebrow color and mascara. And I don't even do that every day. Like maybe once a week when I go to Disneyland, I'll put on makeup, but I really don't wear makeup a lot. But I do feel I'm very educated and knowledgeable when it comes to makeup because I am so picky about what I put on my skin. And this also goes to show you that you don't need a lot of product and you can still get a good variety of cosplay looks or even everyday looks with a few good quality products. <sighs> I hope you feel educated and you were introduced to some new products that you might want to try. I absolutely love everything I own. And that's that's why I don't need a lot of makeup. That's why I don't spend a lot of money on extra makeup. I have what I need, except a lipstick color for Tracer, as you saw in my last video. I still need to work on that. <laughs> So that's it. I hope you got through this whole video or you skipped through things and found some great new products that introduced you to. So look forward to more makeup tutorials and hope you can reference back to this video if you have any more questions about the supplies I use. But that's it for now. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Ah! <laughs> I'm being real with y'all. This is really hard for me to film because I am so pasty pale. A lot of my stuff isn't showing up with my light on and my skin gets really red after I wipe it off, so I've gotta sit here and let it not be red, and then do a new swatch. Ugh. Makeup is hard. I give it to you beauty YouTubers, man. This is time consuming.